We want to go ahead and begin our Festival of Words event on this Saturday, March 2nd, 2019. We are just honored to be here at Hardesty Regional Library in Connors Cove. And with that, we uh, are officially opening up our ceremony. My name is Mark Wilson, and I'm one of the trustees for the American Indian Resource Center, and honored to be your MC this morning. And this program is near and dear to the hearts of many, and want to commend the selection committee, want to commend the, the library, and commend each and every one of you for making your way here to Hardesty Regional Library here on this uh, second uh, Saturday of March. And we're just uh, honored to have an outstanding honoree and her son. I've had the chance to spend a little bit of time with them this morning. They've been in our, our city the last couple of days. And um, just uh, beautiful people and come from a beautiful homeland. And uh, they've just touched our hearts uh, by your presence and your words uh, and your compassion. And we just want to say thank you for gracing us with your presence and for allowing us to share in your journey. We want to, uh, at this time, bring up to the podium our good friend, the CEO for the Tulsa City County Library. I've known... Miss Johnson for gosh, well over 20 years, and uh, and her husband Earl, they're they're good friends of, of Al and I. So my wife Al, and uh, uh, we just think so highly, Kim, of you and the work that you do for the Tulsa City County Library, uh, the work that your husband does uh, at the University of Tulsa. And so, let's welcome to the podium at this time the CEO for the Tulsa City County Library, Miss Kim Johnson. Thank you so much, Mark. We, we, um, in fact, our relationship does go back quite a ways. And I do appreciate you for, um, I appreciate Mark for his leadership um, and his support of the library through the, Af uh, through the American Indian Resource Center. So thank you for that introduction, Mark. Good morning. This is a wonderful event. And uh, every other year, the Tulsa City County Libraries American Indian Resource Center and the Tulsa Library Trust come together to recognize an outstanding writer and a recipient of our Festival Awards Writers Award. This year's winner, Ms. Laura Tohi, is no exception. And she is a fantastic author who is very deserving of this very special honor. We are so proud to be able to present this award today and also proud of the great partnership between the libraries and our Native American community. We also hope that you have an opportunity to visit the American Indian Resource Center at the Zarrell uh, Regional Library. The Resource Center is nationally recognized for its programs to preserve and promote appreciation for our state's American Indian heritage. And th that not notoriety, the national attention the center has received um, it's really due to uh, one individual, and um, it is the coordinator of that center, and it's Teresa Reynolds. Where are you, Teresa? There she is. She's always on the move, but Teresa is an amazing ambassador for the, uh, the center, and also um, we're pleased to have you as a um, very vital uh, member of our staff here, the, um, the library, and um, the work you're doing in the community um, is without exception, and it's being nationally recognized because of the work that you've done for us. And so we want to say thank you to you for that. Let's give her a round of applause. <laughs> so at this time, I just want to take a moment to acknowledge the sponsors who've helped make the Festival Words Writers Award possible through their generosity. I'm going to list a few, and I'll, if you can hold your applause to the end. Um, they are the Tulsa Library Trust, the Maxine and Jack Zarrow Family Foundation, Dr. Frank and Mary Shaw, the Friends of the Helmick Library, the Greater Tulsa Area Indian Affairs Commission, the Tulsa Indian Community Foundation, the Tulsa City County Library's American Indian Resource Center, um, El Chico, 
and the Tulsa City County Library Staff Association. Additional support was provided by the, the Mary Kay Chapman Foundation and the George Kaiser Family Foundation. Can we give them all a round of applause for their support? And in closing, the Tulsa City County Library strongly believes that libraries really do change lives. In fact, one of the ways we do this is by recognizing and sharing the culture and history of American Indians and, pro and by providing a support system through our resource center. So I wanna personally thank all of you again for being here today, for supporting our libraries, supporting um, the, the American Indian Resource Center and supporting our state's rich American Indian culture. I hope you'll stay and enjoy the festivities today that we have planned for you. Enjoy today's program. Thank you. And now I'll turn it back over to Mark. Thank you, Kim. Just really proud of the work that uh, Kim does here with the Tulsa City County Library and uh, just um, an outstanding leader, someone that, that we look up to and that uh, we just are, are so proud, Kim, of, of everything that you do and your family and just a blessing to be, be around, a blessing to have here in our, our beautiful city of Tulsa. Uh, we want to have, uh, also we have some, some special guests here in the, in, in, in the audience today want to uh, recognize and introduce these, uh, this group of individuals. They are always out and about with any Native American, American Indian gathering, but I just have them stand as a group, as a whole, collectively. But our Greater Tulsa Indian Affairs Commissioners, would you please stand and be recognized at this time? Our Greater Tulsa Area Indian Affairs Commission, let's give them a round of applause. Thank you, Commissioners. And I know, too, uh, Kim uh, introduced uh, uh, Teresa. Without her uh, hindsight, her leadership, her vision, uh, this event wouldn't, wouldn't happen, uh, along with uh, your support, Kim. But uh, if we have uh, any other uh, support staff uh, from the Tulsa City County Library, uh, would you please stand and be recognized at this time? Any Tulsa City County Library uh, staff members, please stand and be recognized. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Also, we had a nice breakfast this morning, and uh, we had uh, some royalty that were here with us, and always uh, were just always in awe uh, of our royalty when they come out and they, they, they dress in their Indian clothes and their regalia. It just makes all of us, especially their family members, their moms and their dads and their grandmas and grandpas, especially proud. Uh, to uplift these uh, beautiful young ladies. So uh, I'm going to introduce uh, these individuals at this time from Bixby, Oklahoma, a member of the Muscogee Creek Nation. Um, she is Miss Muscogee Creek Nation, Miss Nina Fox. Nina, would you please stand and be recognized? <laughs> and from Tulsa, Oklahoma, uh, a member of the Sac and Fox uh, tribe, Muscogee Creek Nation tribe, and Shawnee. She is Miss Sack and Fox Nation. So glad that you are here with us this morning, Miss Janae Grass. Janae, please stand and be recognized. Thank you, Janae. Also, do we have any, uh, any veterans in the audience today? Do we have any veterans with us this morning? Would you please stand and be recognized? Let's recognize all of our veterans here with us this morning. Thank you. We have a handful of veterans here with us today. Thank you, veterans. Good to see our good friend, uh, Junior Pratt, here with us this morning. Junior's uh, avid, avid uh, American Indian Resource Center supporter, has been for years and has composed a, a beautiful song that he'll render a little bit later on in the program. Um, but um, Junior's with the Pawnee Public Schools uh, Pawnee Language Program. And at this time, we'll give a Pawnee Language presentation. So again, uh, we want to just say thank you, Junior, for bringing your students up and uh, especially bringing this, this drum to honor our honoree and to honor 
each and every one of us. And uh, again, uh, a little bit later on in the program, it, We'll, we'll honor a special individual that's near and dear to the American Indian Resource Center library uh, community and family. So uh, let's welcome uh, to the stage or to the, for the presentation, Mr. Uh, uh, Junior Pratt, Warren Pratt Jr., uh, teacher and avid AIRC supporter. All right, it is good to be here today. My name is uh, Mr. Pratt in my school official title. And these are some of our, y'all scoot over this way, watch out for the uh, displays behind you. Got spread out. These are some of our Pawnee language class uh, with the Pawnee Public Schools. Uh, what used to be known as foreign language here in the state of Oklahoma is now known as world languages. And so the Pawnee language is one of six or seven, I believe, state certified languages, which means it's taught in the school system on the same level as Spanish, French, German, all those other languages and uh, counts towards graduation. So this is actually the largest class in the public school there in Pawnee is the Pawnee language class. And so these are just about half of our students. We're gonna sing some songs for you just quickly. And this is my sister-in-law here, Vicki, is a title six coordinator for the school. And so our music didn't work out, so she's just going to play this over the mic. We sing a lot of songs in, in our uh, language class, uh, but what we're going to sing for you are some of uh, the songs I'm sure you will recognize, okay? And so I'm not going to tell you the title of them. You'll hear it. You'll know what it is. And the kids really enjoy these songs, but more than that, they're singing them in their native Pawnee tongue. All right, here we go. <laughs>
Inaugurated in 2001, the American Indian Festival of Words Writers Award recognizes written contributions of outstanding American Indian authors, poets, journalists, film, and stage scriptwriters. It is the first and only award given by a public library to honor an American Indian writer. The award is given in odd number years, and recipients receive a $5,000 cash prize, which is sponsored by the Maxine and Jack Zero Family Foundation. And let's give that Family Foundation another round of applause, please. <laughs> Previous winners include Tim Tingle, Joseph Bruchak, Sterling Harjo, Leanne Howe, Carter Rivard, Leslie Marmon Silco, Vine Deloria Jr., Joy Harjo, and this year's honoree, Laura Tohe. <laughs> Laura is Dene of the Sleepy Rock People Clan, born for the Bitter Water Clan. She grew up in Crystal, New Mexico on her Navajo, Navajo Nation homeland, where she attended boarding school and public school in Albuquerque, New Mexico. She earned a PhD in American literature and creative writing from the University of Nebraska in Lincoln. And she is the mother of two sons, one of which is with us this morning. In 2015, she was awarded the Navajo Nation Poet Laureate through 2019. She states, she was raised by my extended family on the Navajo homeland among storytellers who influenced my early writings. My mother used to tell my brothers and me stories in the car on the way to town to get supplies. My first short story publication came from her stories about a brother and a sister who were transformed into prairie dogs. It stayed with me for many years, and then one day my assignment was to begin a story with once upon a time, and that story came out. After being away at school, I always visited my grandmother first, who after clearing away the breakfast dishes and while the coffee was still hot, caught me up on all my family gatherings, on all my family going ons. She states her grandmother was the National Enquirer magazine of our family telling stories, some joyous and some not so savory from past and present. I didn't grow up watching television, Laura states, but my family stories entertained and brought us together at the kitchen table. And when we worked on the in-progress jigsaw puzzle under the dining room tablecloth, such were some of the early influences in my desire to become a writer at 12 years old and for which I am deeply grateful. Her book publications include a chapbook, Making Friends with Water, that was translated into modern dance by the Moving Company in Omaha, Nebraska, and was a prize winner for dance performance from the Institute, Institute of Creative Research and Sports, Sport Art Academy in 1992. Her book on boarding schools, No Parole Today, won the 1999 Poetry of the Year Award, awarded by the Wordcraft Circle of Native American Writers and Storytellers. She co-edited edited Sister Nations, Native American Women Writers on Community in 2002. Her co-talker stories, 2012, is an oral history book with interviews with 20 of the remaining Navajo co-talkers. She writes essays, stories, and children's plays that have appeared in the U.S., Canada, and Europe with French, Dutch, and Italian translations. She is the recipient of the Joy Harjo and Lila Walker Reader's Digest Fund Award and was twice nominated for the Push Cart Award. She is Professor Emerita with Exemplar Distinction from Arizona State University 
and has had faculty affiliations with American Indian Studies, the Center for the Study of Race and Democracy, and Honors College. She is quite distinguished in her own right. And on behalf of the American Indian Festival Awards Writers Award, we're just so pleased to have Laura Tohe as this year's honoree. Let's give her another round of applause, please. We want to invite our, some of our commissioners, Mr. Roberts, Will Hill, and Stella Foster. I introduced you earlier, and he brought his uh, Pawnee students up. But Junior Pratt composed uh, ARIC honor song a few years ago, specifically for this occasion. A beautiful song for a beautiful individual that will be rendered here for such occasion. Also, we want to acknowledge the AIRC Writers Selection Committee members, which include Stella Foster, Nancy Boyette, Mr. Maddie Roberts, Marcy Wakeboard, Terry Combs, Crystal Brownstone, and Ellen Cummings. Let's give those individuals a round of applause, please. <laughs> Laura, as is our custom here in Oklahoma, Reverend Will Hill has a beautiful Pendleton blanket that he wants to present you with. The award will be presented by Ms. Foster. And Mr. Matt Roberts with the check. First of all, I want to introduce myself to you in the Navajo language. This is what we do 
when we become get before an audience. She a Laura Tohi in a shed sena habilinishle, Tora Jeetney Bush's chin. John, I ate what Lana does a che doma e deskishni dashanala. Sasa Anna Wallyede, I ye see Nasha. Shama a Laura Florence Wallyende. Shaja a Benson Tohi Wallyende. A coat talker and leaned World War II got Hanas Ba. At a Arizona State University, the National Shindig at Hohan, the Sitak at Adishana Nishashi. Arod Shina, Shiyaj e Naki Kwe, Shiyaj Des, Deswood, Olia, Deswood Tillman. Aro Laja Narahi e Jeremy Tillman, Olia. Shimado Shije and Nataj Akutoe e Asan Shle. So I just wanted to uh, translate because as native people, we always want to know who's your family and where do you come from? Uh, I am Sleepy Rock people clan, born for the Bitter Water clan. My maternal grandfather clan are the Sun clan people and my paternal grandfather clan are the Coyote Pass people. And um, both of my parents have passed on. My mother was a weaver and she also was a cook in the boarding school. She didn't finish high school. Um, my father was uh, a co-talker in World War II. And um, he was a rancher, a cowboy. And um, he was also a sheep herder towards the end of his life. And he was also a welder. He also didn't finish high school. Um, he enlisted in the service and um, was sent out into the South Pacific during World War II. And I have two sons. This is my younger son, Des. Uh, his name is Des Wood, which means walks forward. And I have an older son named Jeremy and uh, my husband, Doug Tillman, who's not here today. But uh, we are all um, so happy to be here and to experience your generosity, which is um, overwhelming. But I also want to acknowledge uh, the Billa Ashtla'i, the five-fingered people who are here on whose homeland I stand, the Osage, the Cherokee, the Muscogee, the Creek, the Pawnee, and uh, the Sac and Fox nations that are here. I also want to thank the sponsors of this award, the American Indian Festival of Words, the Tulsa Library Trust, Tulsa City County Libraries American Indian Resource Center, the Maxine and Jack Zero Family Foundation, Dr. Frank and Mary Shaw, the Greater Tulsa Indian Affairs and Tulsa Indian Community Foundation. And I also want to give my deep gratitude to Teresa Runnels, who helped organize this event and to bring my son Des and me to this honoring. She's been wonderful, tremendous, a very warm uh, young lady who picked us up at the airport. She even had to wait a long time to get to, for us to get off the plane. And she's been taking us here and there all over Tulsa telling us things about the community. So thank you, uh, Teresa. I don't know where you are, but okay, there you are, way in the back. She likes to be way in the back. <laughs> But yes, thank you, Teresa, for everything you've done for your leadership in getting this event organized. It, uh, I appreciate it very deeply. And also my son, who uh, generously gave up his time and his energy and his creativity to help um, in this performance that we're going to give after I give my talk. Um, I am also honored to be part of a long line of prominent um, Native American writers who have previously received this award and the only award given by a public library to honor an American Indian writer. My little community of Crystal, New Mexico on the Navajo Nation homeland where I mostly grew up had no television, no newspapers, landed at our doorstep, and no telephone sat in our home. There was only a dirt road that led north and south from the little house that I grew up in with my three brothers, one sister, and our mother, a single mother who worked hard in the school cafeteria to keep us clothed 
as best as she, as clothed and fed as best as she could. My mother was a fearless woman who drove us home through blinding winter storms that blew hip hypnotic snow into the headlights. I was terrified of getting stranded in the storm, but I never doubted my mother would get us home. The road that was the source of so much of my childhood anxiety was also the road that eventually led me to books and writing. On our trips to Gallup, New Mexico, the little border town that sat next to several tribal nations, my mother took me to the library. I read stories of a witch who lived in a house that stood on chicken legs, a girl whose heart was so pure that gold fell on her when she walked through a doorway and eventually to the Nancy Drew girl detective stories. I even sneaked in my mother's true romance magazine, <laughs> which she hid from me, but I found it and I read those stories in secret. In elementary school, I learned how to read from the monotonous Dick and Jane reading series. Oh, 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 what a bore that was. <laughs> My fourth grade teacher made me shiver when he read Edgar Allan Poe's The Telltale Heart. My sixth grade teacher read Laura Ingalls Wilder's stories to the class. And in high school English, the Canterbury Tales fascinated me. But there was something missing in all those years of reading stories. I asked myself, where were my stories? Where were the stories of the Diné? Where were the stories of our ancestors who braved through all the worlds to arrive in the glittering world that we presently live in? Where were the stories of our ancestors who fought to keep our way of life, fought for our land and people? And the code talkers who used the Navajo language to pass secret codes in World War II that was never broken? Where were the stories of the long walk, the stories of our removal from our homelands and boarding schools? Where were the stories of our heroes and sheroes that made us proud to, to be who we are, that made us feel a part of a living community that reflected ourselves in stories, poetry, and literature? I felt invisible. My stories and Native people's presence in books were invisible. I longed for stories and people and characters that I could identify with. At 12 years old, I dreamed of becoming a writer, not a poet because I didn't know what poetry was. What stories could I tell? How could I become a writer? I thought only white people could be writers. In college, I wrote my first tentative poems and then put them away because I was not confident of anything I wrote. I graduated from college having read just one anthology of Native American writers and enrolled in my first creative writing class that changed the course of my life. Floundering for what to write took me back to the stories my mother told in the car on our way to Gallup. She used to say, to have no stories is to be an empty person. My creative writing teacher made me see that I had been surrounded by storytellers all my life. Stories of a brother and sister who turned into prairie dogs, how our ancestors came to live at Box Canyon, how to meet the spirit of water. My father told about walking on his knees to the altar as punishment by the nuns, and so many more stories from my family and relatives. Their stories nourished me and helped me take my first steps in becoming a writer, a poet, and scholar. I am grateful to my family for dressing me in the Navajo language and with stories, for they are the stories from which I come. I'm thankful to be given the gift of writing poetry, for it speaks of beauty, it speaks of truths, it speaks of being Dene, Oto, Choctaw, pa Cherokee, Pawnee, of being native, of being indigenous. It is the voice of activism and being visible, and it fills the void that I asked myself so long ago, where are my stories? For to be filled with stories, 
and to be filled with poetry is fulfilling, necessary, and it sustains our lives of na as Native peoples throughout this country. I am deeply honored to be awarded the American Indian Festival of Words Writers Award. And I also want to again thank my son, Des, for giving up his, for sharing his musical talent with everyone here. And thank you all of those that you have come, that have come far and near uh, to celebrate Native cultures. And one of my former students, uh, Verena King, is here. She's teaching in Tahlequah. And she finished her uh, dissertation and graduated from ASU in 2016, right? Yeah, so I'm glad to see her here. Mm -hmm. Um, in just a few more words, then we'll do our performance. May the red nations from all over America continue to rise. May we always cherish the culture and stories from which we come. May our stories fill us with hope, community, and joy. For to have no stories is to be an empty person, but we are fulfilled with stories, all of us today. And again, thank you. We practice last night and we practice a little bit and we practice a few weeks ago and this is the first time I'm doing spoken word my son is a um, musician, graduated from ASU with a degree in music and mathematics. And it, I asked him to compose some songs from these four rain poems that I wrote. Um, these are words that I heard from my grandmother who helped raise me. And not long ago, Dad said, I can help you now. So I, um, he came up with the music for these two songs that we're going to um, perform. They are in Navajo and English, and there's actually four of them, but we're only going to do two of them. Um, this has to do with rain. In the desert southwest, of course, you know, there's little rain there, and so the Navajo people have assigned um, gender to the kind of rain that falls, so we have male rain and we have uh, female rain. Female rain being softer, more gentle, and makes things grow. Male rain is stronger, causing floods and winds and a very kind of very strong storm. So we're gonna do the first um, poem in song in Navajo, and this is the uh, female rain. Um, I will just um, read to you. Uh, the poem while Des kind of, um, you ready? Okay, so I I'll read the first poem in English to you, but I'll perform it in Navajo language. Female rain, dancing from the south, cloudy, cool, gray, pregnant with rain child. At dawn, she gives birth to a gentle mist, flowers bow, with wet sustenance, luminescence all around. My son's a good helper. <laughs> so. Here we go. I hope we, I hope we get a Nammy for this. <laughs> or, a, or a Grammy would be nice too. <laughs> okay. Uh, female rain. And in Navajo we call it Nilsa Ba'ad.
nilza baad. Shada ate go dahnal toko al jesh. Kos khazli. Khonez kaza. Nilza baad betkajol betjolza. Aro nilza baad. Piyaje piti na. Na ne nil kako. Nicht zum Bad, wie Jaja Hasli. Chelatra Hojan, da Trope, als Chelhaja. Aro, nicht ich Kenntnis, das Lag. Thank you. We did these, um, when we practiced this back in Phoenix in December, it started raining the next day. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you can hire us if you want rain here. <laughs> okay, the next uh, poem we're going to do will be in English, and this is called Male Rain. And uh, in Navajo, we call it Nilsa Pakat. And it's a little more, so it's going to be a little bit faster. And uh, we will start with the uh, frog. These instruments were inspected uh, quite closely by the TSA when we got to Phoenix. <laughs> away leaving his enemy behind
Thank you for having having us here. Um, everyone's been very warm and welcoming, and your land is very beautiful. Thank you for having us here. Been very touched by you guys to be here and all your kind words, everything you've done, Mark. Thank you. I can feel the energy and the spirit of everyone here. And it's a real honor and a pleasure to be here. And thank you, Mom, for having me. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. And Teresa. Thank you, Teresa, in the back. <laughs> thank you again. I also want to say um, thank you for this beautiful song, this very moving, um, honoring song that you composed. Uh, it was very touching. And it'll always be a special uh, memory for me that you did this. Uh, it means it, I'm just very moved by it. And also, uh, I will never uh, listen to those songs that the, your students um, sang without thinking of them speaking in the Pawnee. <laughs> but yes, thank you so much. And thank you for everyone for coming out. I didn't get a chance to go to all the tables uh, to personally uh, expre express my gratitude for having my son and I come out and be a part of this experience and be here in the in the mid the mid part of this country, and that you reached out to the Southwest and uh, honored me with this award. It's tremendous, and I'm also just very happy. And I will always be a special place. So if you want to come out to Phoenix, uh, and I call me up, and I'll show you around the hot a hot city. <laughs> It's, it's uh, 110 out there, but don't come in the in the summertime. And the winter would be better. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. Thank you, Des. You know, you'll always be part of uh, the American Indian Resource Center family from here on out. And always be part of the Tulsa City County Library family uh, as well. And... Um, you know, we were we just uh, the brief conversation that we shared this morning on the way here. We, uh, we talked about how how beautiful uh, your homeland is and how it it touches our hearts. The uh, the, the 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 grand the the colors, the spectrum, the the rain and the wind. How it talks to a lot of us, yes. and and it, not everybody gets it, no. um, but but we do. And so your presence here this morning in the last uh, couple of days uh, have made an impact on, on a lot of us. And uh, we just wish you uh, traveling grace and uh, the best in your future endeavors and the impact that you have on your students. Uh, I know uh, the young lady from, from Northeastern State University just was glowing this morning talking about uh, your influence uh, on, on, on her life. So, uh, just a positive role model. And Des, beautiful, beautiful music this morning. Let's give Des another round of applause for that beautiful composition. All right, Teresa, some, um, some instructions and then uh, stand by Reverend Hill. I want to thank everyone for coming today. Um, after this, we will go into the main part of the library. You received a brochure um, when you came in, and it has all the activities that will be going on today. They're all free. Um, we have princesses here today. I'm so excited. My niece is here, and my tribe, the Sac and Flax Nation, sent their princesses. So I'm very excited about today. We also have the Pratt family here. They were selling Indian tacos. And then immediately after this, um, Ms. Tohi will be uh, having a book signing. So Magic City Books is here. Um, we have posters for her to sign. Please visit with her. She is an awesome, awesome lady. Um, and I, I, I can't see you all. So <laughs> thank you again for coming. And just visit all of our um, presenters. Thank you.
And we have just one more order of business. Uh, I'm going to introduce uh, our good friend and a member of our advisory council to come up and share some words about a dear um, a, a friend of ours that we lost recently. So Reverend Hill, would you come forward at this time? And I'm going to ask my good friend and brother, uh, Mr. Robbie Ankew, uh, Indian Affairs Commission, to make uh, make a way over here to, to, to join us at the drum. Uh, Junior, if that's okay. Yeah, okay. Reverend Hill. Yate to our Dene sister and brother that are here. Sio Tohijan, Nihina to our Cherokee and Hishes Tungo to our people out here from the Muskogee Nation, many different peoples that are assembled here today. Noah, we thank you very much for being here. And uh, as part of the American Indian Resources Department, our job as we sit on this committee is to look for the authentic and the best representation of our native people. There were 557 different Indian tribes that live here in the continental United States. And that number does not include Indians living in South America, Mexico, or the great grandmother lands of the Canadas, where there are many, many more. Over 650 different languages spoken. And so here in the last demographic that was taken in the Tulsa area, it is said that there may be as many as 99 different tribes represented here in our city of Tulsa. So as you can see there, Native America is alive and well here in this great city of ours. My people settled here back in 1830 at the Great Trail of Tears, the Loja Bogalgi people, they settled right where 31st and Riverside uh, is to this day. Everywhere you walk in this city, you find native history. So very honored here to have the uh, uh, Tulsa Indian Affairs Commission. And like I said, our job is to set under the great leadership of our, our wonderful Teresa Reynolds, who worked so hard along with all the people at the library and those that sit on this committee, giving their wisdom and knowledge and helping to preserve uh, the rich heritage of our people. Over 4,000 books and media items, even uh, materials, are provided here at the Tulsa Indian Resource, or which might say the American Indian Resource uh, Center. And with it, we try to select the best to sit with us to think about all those things that are necessary to help, which you might say, portray the best that Native America has to offer. This past year on December 1st, we lost a bright star, but she's not really lost. A lot of times as a storyteller, I could hear her telling the story of how the Milky Way came to be. And I knew her as Gehuja, which means girl, but she was more than just a girl. She was a wonderful artist and a wonderful person filled with empathy and care, not only with a passion for her artwork and her medium work, but also for the Native people. It wasn't about her tribe, the Aniyoia or the Cherokee people. It was about Native people on this continent. All of us have a shared history. All of us know what it is to cry. We know what it is to feel fear, and we know what it is to triumph. She was four, the 14th living Cherokee who had studied and, which you might say, embraced the, the artwork of basket weaving, which she became well known of. As a matter of fact, the Smithsonian Institute requested, she didn't have to donate, they requested her work to be a lifetime work put in the Smithsonian Hall of Fame there at the National Museum of the American Indian. Uh, libraries and museums all across this country and internationally have felt the impact of Shan Goshorn, known as Deborah Shan Goshorn. I always thought it was amazing that her name, we talked one time and her name Shan comes from an old language and it means someone of wisdom. It also means uh, 
the blessed, or what you might say, the grace of the creator. And she was every bit of that. I don't know of anybody that could say anything negative about Shan. She was very passionate toward the history of her people. In her basketry, she wove not only maps, but treaties, also the stories of Native American women. It's often been said among our traditional people that our Indian women, they are the glory of our nations, the bringer of life. They're the ones that bring forth the leaders of our next generation. They're also the ones that provide for our nation. Our soldiers and our warriors could never have made stands as they did if it hadn't been for women, Indian women, that help, which you might say, sustain all of these nations and all of our peoples. And so Shan was one of those people, one of those wonderful people who if you had a chance to hear her laugh or see her bright smile, you could be touched. She not only had a feeling for native people or people in general, the human race, but also our two-legged and our four-legged brothers. She became a certified uh, rehabilitator of, of uh, aviars, avions. She even helped, uh, which you might say, nurse some of the, uh, some of the special birds of her people and community. She was very active. She had a very strong heart for our animal brothers. And we thank the creator for such a wonderful person who walked among us. Not only just to inspire Indian girls as to something that you should try to attain and to achieve, to have a heartbeat for your people, but also to have a heartbeat for our race, the human race, and all of its grand and glory. Gay Huja, we're exceptional, wonderful friend. Nobody, nobody could, could bring to life in her, her print work or her media or even her baskets, basket weaving that told the story, the heartbreak, the tragedy, but also the triumph of many different nations and peoples and communities. Each and every one of us need to look for that fire that is kindled within all of us that she had. So we say among the Cherokee people, we never say goodbye. There's no goodbye in our language. In many different native languages, there's no word for goodbye. It's often thought of as kind of a bad luck saying. But among the Cherokee, they say, till we see you again. And every time we see every young lady who rises up in their artwork or achieves a nursing degree or a diploma or even helps raise a child, we say, Wado, thank you. You inspire us. You strengthen us. You are the heart of Shan Goshorn, and she is our heart. So she's never really gone. We will see her again in all the generations to come. So in my own language, I want to say, Mado, Machi, and Talagachi, Hilmahin, Felix, Begez, Ushchi. We are always touched and always blessed. Could we have a moment of silence, please? Would you please rise as we begin with a very special song to commemorate our friend and the wonderful life that she led.